Welcome back, this time we have a triangle grid, and you might know this is not a default thing you can do in Godot, but there's a few tricks we can do to make this work. Uh, so I can click on a tile and it'll highlight the one that my mouse is currently on, um, and if we want, we can make it so that it highlights the adjacent ones here, and we can even change the size, so I can make these triangles larger, or I can make them smaller as well, and we can disable highlighting the adjacent one. So I'm going to show you how to make this in this video, so let's go. The main trick to how this works is that we use a tile map and we use a hex grid. We're able to use that to easily do the math for us. So let's go ahead and add this in and we can import our tile map. All right, I've imported the hex grid, so the standard asset that I've used in my other projects as well. We want to switch our grid to be hexagon. We can go ahead and import this. Make sure you're in the tile set tab and we can import this. Go ahead and create that. Let's go ahead and set the dimensions here. So this is just for my asset. If you're using a different one, it'll be slightly different. We can put this as 9, 8, 18. Your dimensions might be different. My texture resolution is a 110 by a 94, and I will delete these ones I don't want. Now let's adjust the settings for this tile set. So we want hexagon, diamond right, and we can leave on a horizontal offset. The size, I'm going to make 94 by 94. So here's the main way that the triangle grid works. So as example, I will draw in some hexagons. You can see this happens to make a perfect equilateral triangle. Adding these on, we have some more equilateral triangles. So we use the geometry that's worked out automatically by the hex grid, and we can just draw lines between these points. So let's implement that. So let's add a script to this tile map. Go ahead and save it as well. We can leave the name on default, and we're only going to be working in this file, so I'm going to hide that section. So we are primarily going to work in the draw section, so let's add that. This is a default in Godot. So first let's make a variable for the ending coordinate. So if we look back at our hex grid here, you can see it shows the coordinates in the bottom. Uh, so we're going to start with the 0, 0 point, which is up here. And we want to extend it down. Uh, you can go however far you want. For mine, I'm going to go down to the coordinate being 0, 08. So within our script, let's add a variable for that. This will be end chord. Also, you probably want to deselect the tile map, otherwise it starts selecting a ton of stuff down there. We'll set this to 8. Next, as you saw, we had alternating colors for the triangles. We can just add an array with two colors. So we can add colors to alternate. You can use whatever two colors you want for yours. I'm going to use the same ones that I used before, which was this for the blue blue color and this one for the purple one. Make sure you put these in as a value from 0 to 1. If you're if you're starting with a value from 0 to 255, you can just divide it by 255 to get the value here. Next, we want to track what our position is in this array. So we can say our color pause for position. We'll start at 0. All right, so let's loop through the grid we're going to use for this. We want to go from 0 to whatever our ending coordinate was, but we want to step by whatever our triangle size is. We can set that at the top of our script. So we'll make this an exported variable so that uh, we can change it in the inspector. The examples I showed earlier were 1, 2, and 3. So we'll specify a step size. If you're not familiar, it's start and step up by this amount. You can just duplicate that line and uh, change the y to be an x. Next, let's check what our current position is in the grid. It's for our convenience. We'll just have a current is equal to a vector 2i. So we're only using integer coordinates for this. And we want to have x, y. Next, let's add a function to get the surrounding triangles. So if we look at our hex grid, each hexagon that I've highlighted here, those are the corners of our triangles. So in this example, we're using a triangle size of 2, just for this uh, illustration here. And I want to find out what are the six surrounding points from uh, this blue spot here. It's going to be all these red spots. 
So to find those, we just have to calculate the offsets, which if you look at the coordinates in the bottom left, it tells us what those are. So uh, this is where the size that we're using comes into play of the tile layout being diamond right, horizontal offset. So if you're not using those values, then these offsets are going to be different for you. Um, I prefer this one. I believe some of the other ones are not consistent. Uh, for example, if you move over by two spaces, then it might be adding one to the X and one to the Y, for example. But then if I go from here to here, then it would be adding different amounts. So make sure you're using these ones, at least to match up with mine. Let's add that function to get what those offsets are. So we'll call this triangle offsets. We want to know where we're getting the offset from. So our starting position, which is a vector 2i, and the size, which we can set as a default to be 2. And to make e things easier to type, we can have separate variables for the starting x and starting y. So start x is equal to start.x. Deselect the tile map, start.x. And the same for the y. Then we're just going to return an array of those six points. So we can say return. And just to avoid any mistakes, just copy this in. So and copy this onto yours. Add to the x. Add x and y. And so on. Now when we're drawing in these polygons, we have to specify four points for these triangles. Even though there's only three, we have to wrap to the last one again. So let's add another function for that where we'll just take in uh, the triangle offsets and you can wrap it around. Let's create that down here. Function get triangle offsets so the position that we're getting offsets from and triangle size again we can just do size sure triangle size we can just get those offsets from that function we just made we'll call this current triangle offsets without those parentheses that's just equal to the function so we have to specify these parameters again for this function so we can just pass those directly in and triangle size this should be a wrap so because we're wrapping the points so wrap and that should be it just triangle offsets so using the current ones let's just append on the first one to the end so we can just say dot append and then use position zero and then we can just return that array so let's copy this function name and back down here where we have the double for loop let's say our current triangle offsets and it's for our current position and whatever triangle size is this fight at the top. Now we're going to loop through these offsets. So in the example again, we're going to draw here to here, there, and there. And we'll just do that all the way around this point. So we'll go for i in range. So we want to get the length of these triangle offsets. But we don't want to go to the last one because then we'd have to wrap back around. We'll just do the length of minus one. Remember, this returns those six points around us. So we're going to look at pairs at a time. That's how we'll do this. So we'll just have it for point one is just the current triangle offsets at position i. And then duplicate that and we can have point two i plus one. And so the three points that make up this triangle, so current points, well, it's just our current one, if it's the center, and at point one and point two. So we're going to end up attempting to draw stuff outside of the bounds that we don't want to draw. So regardless of if we draw that or not, let's go ahead and increment the color position. So we can say color pause equals, then do parentheses, color pause a plus one to wrap back around. So first we're at this position, then this one, then to go back to the beginning, we use modulo to get to the remainder. We don't just want to do the len of colors to alternate. Now to get that nice triangle shape that I showed earlier, we don't want to draw like on the whole map instead. We want to make sure this shape that we're trying to draw is inside those bounds that we want to actually be inside of. So let's make a function for that. Above draw, let's say funk is triangle in bounds, and we can give it the points. And this is going to return a boolean. So we'll say if points, so because this is an array, we can say dot any, and then we pass in a function as a lambda. So we'll say take in a point, which is a vector 2i, and then return is point dot x greater than point dot y. If that's the case, that means we are outside of what we want to draw. So we look here at the coordinates in the bottom left, where x is greater than y, that's above where it's going to be drawn. We don't want to draw up there. We only want to draw in this region here, approximately. So if any of those points satisfy this condition, then we don't want to draw this triangle. So we'll return false. It's not in bounds. And we'll say if not all instead of any. And at the end, we'll change this to be x is greater than or equal to 0 and y greater than or equal to 0. And we can just do this to make it cleaner. 
So this accounts for this instance up here, or we don't want to draw down here either. So in that case, they're not all within this, then we'll say return false. But if we pass those, then we can return true. There we go. Make sure the parentheses lines up with this if statement. Get rid of these extra lines here. So let's copy that function. And at the bottom here, we can say if that point is not within the bounds, that's our current points that we're using. And we can just continue. There's no reason to draw this triangle. You might be wondering, oh wait, aren't we going from 0 to the ending coordinate? Well, that's technically true, but for the point 0, 0, for example, I'm going to attempt to draw the points that were up here, which are outside the bounds. That's why we add in those checks for being outside of the coordinates. So currently those points that we're looping over are the map coordinates, which means it's the actual hex grid coordinates, like 0, 0, 4, 4, 2, 4. Uh, let's convert those to the actual local coordinates. So we can just use a map function for that. I guess it's, that's a confusing name. So we will say current points equals current points dot map. And we can provide a function. Uh, you could use a lambda here, but the built-in function that we want to use here is map to local, which they double used the word map here, which is confusing. But uh, take out the extra parentheses here because you want the function name, not to actually call the function. So this map means apply to each element of the list, whereas this one is talking about the hexagon map. All right, so let's get the mouse position. So mouse pause is equal to, so we can get the global mouse position, but let's convert that to local. So to local, then get global mouse position. Then for the current polygon that we're using, uh, that's what these points are, but we have to convert that to a vector to, so let's do that. We can say current polygon equals packed vector to array, and then you can just pass in the current points, the current tile color that we're using. Remember, we're using that array from up top. So it's just colors to alternate, so equals colors to alternate at color pause, which is that variable from up here. Now let's add a key bind. So let's open our project settings. Things. Add a new action called tile underscore pressed. Let's add click the plus button to add in the keybind you want to use. I'm going to use the left mouse button. Press OK and close. So let's check if we just press that. So if input uh, is action, uh, we want pressed, not just pressed, or else it will just show the color for one frame. We want tile pressed. If geometry 2D, so this is a built-in, let's just do geometry. Use this to easily check is point in polygon. So we want to, to check if our mouse position is inside of the current polygon that's made up of our triangles. So current polygon, if that's the case, then let's change the color. So the current tile color that we're going to use. In this case, this is the color that you want to change a tile to when your mouse clicks on it. Uh, I'm just going to do black for this example. So we can say color.black. All right, let's go below here. And we can just say to draw that colored polygon. So draw colored polygon. So the points, again, we want to use our current polygon. And it's whatever the color is. So it's either going to be black, or if not, then it's going to default to the checkerboard pattern color. So let's test if this works. There we go. Seems to be working. We can leave these hexagons if we want. They're just for debugging, though, so they don't really hurt. Uh, so you might notice this doesn't look quite as good as before and it also appears that when I click it does not change the color so let's fix that currently draw only runs when being told to update so inside of the process section, um, this is slightly inefficient. It's the simplest way, so we can use this. So we can say Q redraw. So it's basically going to redraw those shapes every frame. Um, if we don't do this, then it doesn't update, and therefore never changes the color even when we click. If we try this now, yep, if I'm holding down left mouse button, then it shows a black color in that triangle. Let's add some outlines to these shapes. So you'll remember in the example earlier, uh, we had some outlines around the triangles and then a thicker outline around the whole board. So let's add that. So to first to draw the lines, we can just go below where we said to draw a colored polygon, and we can say draw polyline. So this just means we want to draw multiple lines. This is where we need our points to be wrapped around a current polygon. Remember this one up here, this variable, this only has these three points within it. So we need to just add in that fourth one, which is just the first point again. So for that, we can say a plus a pack vector to array. This is kind of hacky, but we do parentheses and square bracket. And then we just get the first point from the current polygon. 
Then we specify the colors. You want to have one more parenthesis after here. I'm going to go to the next line just so it's easier to read this and doesn't go off screen. We'll say color.black. Feel free to use a different color if you want to have different outlines. And then we specify the width. I'm going to use 7 for this. Um, but maybe let's make this a variable up top inside of draw. So we can say small triangle border width. We can set that to 7. And let's also go ahead and make the large one, which is going to have a width of 10. So we can say large triangle. So, uh, or maybe just whole board width, a uh, border width. All right, so this one is the small triangle border width. Let's uh, look at this. Yep, we have the uh, small ones here. And if we want, uh, we can take out these hexagons. Um, or if you want to leave them in, it does kind of look nice. But I will remove them. And then the user never knows we were actually using a hex grid all along. The border stays nice. All right, and we can still click and all that. Everything works. Beautiful. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial there. So if you have any questions, you can join the Discord or download the ASIN below. Other than that, thanks for watching.